Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I want to talk to you about homeschool planning. We are in spring now and I think this is a time of year where a lot of us are looking forward to the next school year and prepping and planning and I want to show you how I do it. Now this was not originally my idea. I got um, how I do my planning from Science Mama, which if you haven't checked out her channel, it's amazing. Check it out. I will link down the video I watched where she talks about how she uses Microsoft OneNote to actually keep track of what she's using and prepping and planning. So I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you on my computer how I organize all my information and how I look forward to the next school year. All right, so this is OneNote in Microsoft Word. So over here I have my different little file folders. So you can see here I have the homeschool year 2021-2022. So I'm going to show you this previous year's because it's all complete and I'll show you a brief glimpse into how I'm planning for next year. So my first tab is planning and in all these tabs there's little sections and this is the best way I have found to organize it. And one thing I really about really like about using Microsoft OneNote is that I can have this available through my phone. So if I'm looking for a specific curriculum or I'm on, like we're at the park schooling, I can bring any of this information up on my phone. So the first tab I have under planning is terms. So we do the Sabbath scheduling six weeks on, one week off. So obviously I went through here, decided which weeks would be off and how many days it was, when holidays were. And this is my to-do list when we are on that week off. We usually do a field trip. I prep for the following six weeks. I make sure all the library checkouts are organized and I look at our curriculum, see if there's anything we need to buy. Next under that tab is goals and visions. <clears throat> so this I use for what I want us to be able to accomplish that year. So I have it specifically for my third grader and specifically for my kindergartner. Now I get these from, I look up my state standards which you can look up that stuff is available online for free and it will show you what is expected for that grade level. I do pull some other books as well to see what is expected for that grade level because I think it is very good, although children learn at different paces, to have a goal in mind for the year, something you are working towards. So I broke it down into different categories and I will check these off once my child has completed it. So you can see my third grader has done most of this because we are nearing the end of the year. And those are the things I want to make sure she has covered. Same with my kindergarten, she's covered almost everything for her kindergarten year. Next is a to-do list. I will use this for anything I need to get done. I will write it in here. And then again, I can have it access to it on my phone if I need to. To buy list. So this is where I put obviously what curriculum I need to buy and how much it's going to be. I also keep track on this section here. I have a budget video. I'll show you how it all breaks down. One nice thing about using OneNote is you can insert Excel spreadsheets and I use Excel spreadsheets to track all my spending, but this is just a quick overview of what I've been spending. And once I buy the curriculum, I mark it off added to my Excel spreadsheet. Same with this and this. I'll say about all the curriculum we've used this year. Next tab is lesson plans. So this will be our schedule for the year. And this was our schedule that we did the beginning of the year. It obviously has changed since then. We do not do morning basket anymore. We do not do Spanish, different things like this. But I like to have a general idea of what we'll be doing when, because that's just easier for me and my kids. So we have our daily schedule and then we have specials. So co-op, horse riding, extras is things we might not get to, but things I think would be interesting to do. Next is curriculum list. So up here we have family curriculum. So again, we had morning basket for half a year. We dropped it. Electives. So this is pretty much just a brain dump area. I know a lot of people like to write it down on paper, but in my house, paper doesn't last long. It gets scribbled on or recycled. So having a physical copy is really nice because especially when you're looking at things like my what they did during each year, I have 
what they did for each year during the year. So if I ever have to look back and know, here we go, what they did for that school year, I can look back and have all that information. So kind of like our own little portfolio. So this was the curriculum that we used as family. The Torchlight book list. I it obviously imported this from Excel, but I like to write down the name of the book and where I'm getting at library, interlibrary loan. If it's an interlibrary loan, how much would it cost to buy it so I can decide if it's worth buying or not, different things like that. I think this is really helpful to get an idea of how much out of pocket would I have to spend if I had to buy certain materials and what the availability of my library is. So that is how I went through with that. Also helps when I plan in my planner, knowing when I need to get what when. Curriculum for third grade. So this is what we did last summer, this section right here. This is what we did the beginning of this year. And this is summer. This current summer, what I have planned here. And then some of our group subjects down here. What I really like on this side here is other ideas. So if you ever watch a video or you hear about a curriculum you think would be interesting to use, I write it down in this really long list. And if it's highlighted, it's something I really think I should look into more so it doesn't kind of get lost in the list. But down here I also have um, future things, so eighth grade, high school, things like that that I think would be interesting to look at but I don't have time to do it right now and I don't want to forget so I write it down here. This has been extremely helpful looking back at. So this was my for my third grader. This was for my pre-k to k. This is what we did last summer. This is what we did during the fall. And I have the same thing, other ideas here, which I've heard of interesting things. I put it down here and I label it field trip. So during our week off, we usually, of our six weeks on, one week off, we do a field trip. And I'd like to try to plan certain field trips during certain times of year. Obviously, museums would be better during the colder months and things like pumpkin farms are seasonal. So I will write down my ideas of where I would like to go and the general cost of those things, because I think that's also important too. And then I have my maybes, you know, we might get to this, we may not. Read aloud list. So this is all the books I read aloud this year to my kids. And this is all the assigned independent reading my third grader had. She read a lot more than this, but this is her assigned school reading. So she finished all that. Next would be routine. So I keep things like errands, my chores, the kids' chores down here. They have more chores than this. Obviously, clean up toys, help around the house. But this is something that they need to get done every single day, no matter what. And then the last one is summer plans. So summer 2022. So this will bring us to this summer. So the different things I want to cover. So again, the highlighted is something I need to make sure I look more into, but these are generally just ideas. Nothing is written in stone. It can always change, but um, a general schedule I would like for my eight-year-old, a general schedule for my five-year-old. Blue obviously is co-op or extracurricular activities we'll be doing. Green is group work we'll be doing. So I have all that here and then extras is if we have time, can we do these things? And then first, each month during the summer, I want to spend concentrating on a specific thing that we did not get through this year. And then that is the entire school section. And that is in our entire year summed up in this. So if you go down on this, um, so you can see I have this school year and then next school year. Now, I haven't done a ton in this school next planning area yet. I have a general idea of the group subjects I want to cover. I have a general idea of what I want to do for fourth grade, first grade, but this is where I do my planning. I write my ideas down here. I keep an idea of cost in mind. Again, I have not gone through the six weeks, one week off yet. 
but I have gone through and done the goals and vision for fourth grade. What do I want my fourth grader to be able to know? All these different things that she should be covering for that year. Same for my kindergartner. I have not finished this yet. And then to-do list, blank. I have nothing to do list for now. To buy list, I've definitely started doing that, looking at the different curriculums we want to use and how much it's going to cost. So that is broken down by group work, fourth grade, K, or first grade work. Again, I'll keep track of that cost. And for the school year, I break down what curriculum my nine or fourth grader will be using, what my K to first grader will be using. And then our family subjects are broken down here. I really like that you can include links too, so I don't forget about certain things. And then a general idea of what I think my fourth grader school year will look like. Again, this is still in the planning stages, but I need to write it down and see it for it to make sense. Same with our schedule. This will obviously change because schedules are always changing. So curriculum list, again, pretty blank right now. Same with the torchlight list. I don't have the torchlight list for the next year. Um, I have nothing for obviously not this summer, but the following summer, but I do copy the ideas list right over here. So I'm always looking at that. Same with K. Always looking at that. Field trips, haven't planned any. And then obviously we haven't done any reading for the next school year. And rhythm and chores pretty much stays the same. And then the following summer. So you can see how it is broken down. And it seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It really helps me organize everything, especially digitally. It makes it a lot easier and I can access it. And I have a running record of all the stuff we did. And I also have those things I can remember. Oh, that's interesting. I write it down. I know it's all in one place. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. But thanks for watching.